Today we're going to talk about managing customer payments. There are two ways to manage customer payments through the Cash Receipts Journal. Let's take a look at a Cash Receipts Journal for a customer called Sunset Wholesalers. We'll open up a payment journal. <coughs> Notice there are two ways to enter the journal. One is through the Enter Customer Payments form and one is through the Lines form. Let's take a look at the lines first. Let's enter the customer number for Sunset Wholesales. The first way to find an invoice is to actually use the invoice lookup. Notice that all the invoices are listed here. And let's assume we had a $990 payment and we're looking for the appropriate invoice. Based on this, we might want to select the invoice 10035 for $1,000. Turns out that that invoice had a discount of $10 and it pops up $990 and that's the one we wanted to find. Let's assume that we have a $990 credit, but we're not exactly sure what we want to apply it to. There are additional features in AX2012 that will allow us to apply this cash automatically. Notice in the function settlement form, we have a feature called Mark by Priority. If you look in the Accounts Receivable Parameters under Settlement, you can set the priority for how your cash receipts will be applied. In our case, I have assigned the priority to applying the cash to the smallest amounts first. So we have a $990 payment. If I click on Mark by Priority, note that it applied $200 against the smallest invoice and applied the remaining amounts to this line for $790. Maybe that's not what we wanted to do, but instead we wanted to partially apply it to a free text invoice that had two lines, one for a thousand and one for two thousand, such as this invoice right here. For any free text invoices that have multiple lines, you can now mark lines independently. So if you click on Mark Invoice Lines, you'll notice we have a three thousand dollar free text invoice with two different lines, one with a thousand and one with two thousand. We can simply unmark the 2000 and it will apply the cash against the $1,000 line. In our case, since we have not set the parameter and AR parameters for partial discounts, it will apply the 990 against the invoice but will not give us the discount. We do have some options, however. We can manually override the discount with the Use Cash Discount field. In this case, we can say Always Take the Discount. And now the amount to settle is $29.70. We can go in and mark invoice lines. And notice now that it does take the discount and the, two, the $990 cash receipt matches correctly. You can also perform these same functions in the Enter Customer Payments form. Let's go ahead and clear this settlement and show you how that works in that form as well. So now we have the same payment journal, but we want to use the Enter Customer Payments form instead. Note here that we have customer 1102. Let's enter our amount, 990. And we have the same form shown in the bottom of the screen. Again, we have Mark by Priority, which selects the two items we had before. Let's clear all these items. Now if we select the the invoice with multiple lines. Notice we have Mark Invoice Lines. So by using the Enter Customer Payments form, we can perform the same cash payment settlements as we did in the payment journal. There are times when you want to go ahead and reverse a payment or an invoice that you have made. So let's take a look at how that is done. We're going to close our journal up. Let's take a look at the the transactions for Sunset Wholesales. We will filter on the open transactions and notice that we get a list of all the open transactions for Sunset. If we select an invoice, we can click on Reverse Transaction. What that does is reverses the transaction as if it wasn't posted. We put a reason code, there's an error, and we click OK. Now you notice that it has disappeared from the open transactions for this customer. There is a reversing entry for it, so if you go to the closed transaction editing form, you'll see both the $1,000 invoice and a $1,000 reversal. If you have a cash payment that you want to reverse, use the cancel payment option. 
By doing this, what this allows you to do is the same thing except you're reversing a payment. Let's say it was an NSF check. We click OK. And the payment's been canceled, and it is also reversed from the customer transaction. You can also note that there's a new feature in AX2012 called Invoice Corrections that will allow you to create an audit trail for those invoices and actually modify the original invoice. You may want to review that feature to see if it meets your needs. Another part of payment management is currency revaluation. At the point in time you create an invoice, there's a currency associated with that invoice. However, currency rates change over a period of time, and you may want to do currency revaluations. When you run a currency revaluation, that revaluation will create unrealized gains and losses on the invoice. When you make a payment and apply that payment against the invoice, those unrealized exchange adjustments will be converted to realized exchange adjustments. Now let's take a look at how foreign exchange adjustments work. I have a customer out here called Sparrow Wholesales. Let's take a look at their transactions. At the end here we have an open transactions for 200 that was created on February 1st, 2011. In the general ledger, I have set up the exchange rates now so that on March 1st, the exchange rate from Euro to USD has changed. So let's run a currency revaluation and see what happens. Go to the area page, foreign currency revaluation, we'll press the foreign currency revaluation button, and we're going to run our reevaluation as of April 30th. We're going to select Sparrow Wholesales for our customer. Then we'll run the evaluation. Note at the bottom we had our revaluation. Re if we look at the transactions, it ran it for the invoice that we have out there. Now let's take a look at the transactions for Sparrow. If we look at the transactions, we have the, a 200 euro transaction. We also have a foreign currency reevaluation for $6.60. If we look at the voucher, we'll see that that amount was posted to the currency adjustment loss unrealized account. Now let's see what happens when we post a payment against that account. We'll post the payment after the currency revaluation date. So we'll create a payment journal. And let's create a payment on May 1st for the full amount. Let's select Sparrow Wholesales. Let's find that invoice, 200. Since we're in USD and the invoice is in Euros, it made a conversion. We'll go ahead and post that payment. Now let's take a look at the transactions for Sparrow. Notice we have the 200 invoice in euros. We have a payment of 270 in USD. The conversion rate that we have in the currency exchange rate table is 135 per $100. Now notice down here we have a rate adjustment of 660. If we go to look at the voucher, the voucher has re reversed out the unrealized gains and posted it to the realized gains. That's all we have today for customer payments. I hope the information was useful for you.